Good evening, everybody. Today we are back with the fourth installment of our Fans Talk About Buckethead series. So, let's begin. Woo! How or when did you first hear of Buckethead? I honestly have no idea when I first heard of Buckethead. I definitely remember seeing him doing the Guns N' Roses stuff on MTV when I was younger. But as far as getting seriously invested in Buckethead, I would say probably close to 10 years ago. I stumbled across a video of one of the Herbie props, one of the decapitated zombie head props on YouTube. And I was very much interested in the prop because clearly I like spooky things. And I just thought that that was neat. So when I figured out that it was uh, associated with Buckethead and Buckethead was the one that made it famous, I decided to look more into him and I just fell more and more in love with his shtick. So yeah, I really uh, just kind of took off from finding a Herbie video and finding out what Herbie was. I first heard of Buckethead through a friend at my work and he said it in such a nonchalant way. Oh, hey, you know, you should check out this dude Buckethead. I know you play guitar. He's insane. He's really good. I saw him last year in 2018 and, you know, he you should just check him out. I won't even say anymore. So I did and I remember when I first heard uh, I think it was Solar Sailcraft was the very first song I've ever heard by him and it was just like it took me away it was a it was a trip of its own to date that is my favorite song by him still I also feel proud to know that the song that turned me on to him wasn't exactly one of his most famous ones it was that so I think that's really cool. So the first time I heard Buckethead was the end of 2008. I didn't know it was him at the time. Uh, my kids are about 10 and 12 and I got them Rock Band 2 for Christmas that year. It came with the song Shackler's Revenge from Chinese Democracy. I thought it was a really good song, but I especially liked the intro riff. It had a really unique effect and this cool, slightly off-time groove. A few months later they released the full album as downloadable content and I got all the songs. Finally, uh, I, I said I need to find out who's playing guitar on this album. Uh, at that point, I knew Axel was singing, but I had no idea who was in the band. Um, so the album credits uh, listed Buckethead uh, as one of the main guitar players. So I did a YouTube search, and there wasn't much. Uh, it was, for, I think, the Rock and Rio show is what I remember. It was the first time that I saw what Buckethead looked like, and I thought he looked cool as fuck. And so then, you know, I did a search for Buckethead and the first song that YouTube suggested was Soothsayer. Uh, and like most people, the first time I heard that song, I thought it was one of the best songs I had ever heard. The second song that was suggested was Jordan. And as a guitar player, um, I was blown away. It was like hearing Eddie Van Halen back in the 80s, only better. Then I went on and uh, tried to find as much music as I could. Yeah, at that point, it just became uh, a full-blown addiction. How did I first hear about Buckethead? Probably during the mid-1990s. You heard things about this guy from California wearing a bucket on his head who was bringing the shred guitar back. And I grew up in an era in the 1980s where I thought, I saw, and heard it all. And in 1999, seeing the footage of the Ozfest when Primus brought him out with that brown flying V guitar, that yellow jacket of his looking seven feet tall, just shredding. It was incredible. I immediately became obsessed and a huge fanatic. I remember going the next day to Tower Records and getting whatever CDs I can get on him. And it wasn't much, believe it or not. I remember getting Calma and Monsters and Robots. And then hearing the fact that he was going to be joining one of my favorite all-time bands, Guns N' Roses, uh, and replacing one of my guitar heroes, Slash, I was really excited and intrigued. Saw the footage, the pay-per-view, in 2001 Rock in Rio, and as much as I was excited to see Guns N' Roses play, I was just obsessed and focused on Buckethead the whole time. I first heard of Buckethead, it was back in 2014. I had just listened to uh, Since I've Been Loving You by Jimmy Page, you know, and I just had to have some more blues, you know, so I went on, I think it was a guitar magazine, and I was checking the, the top 10 guitarists, and I was like seeing what they had, and as soon as I got to Buckethead, I was like, what the? So I went on YouTube to explore, see what kind of music he had. Fortunately, it was, it was a live version of White Watch, which blew my mind, you know, I just, I couldn't believe it, and then the more I explored, the better it got. First time I heard about Buckethead was I just had joined a band in 2005 and the, all the members pretty much were in love with him. I, I had never heard of him. 
didn't hear him hear him until you know Guitar Hero 2 Jordan and that's the first image that I saw was that you know when you unlock the bonus track of his it has him and the two chicken dudes on the side and that was the first time I saw him I was like what is the I I didn't really know what to expect I'm always in search of something I've never heard before and uh, he's the last person that I've found that has done that and I <laughs> I hope somebody else blows me away like he does but I, I just I kind of doubt it because he's just amazing. I first heard of Buckethead on Guitar Hero 2 I was like wow the song Jordan was on I, like, wow, I really like this song and yeah, yeah it just changed me I didn't care what he wore on stage or not but yeah, it was awesome. I really enjoyed the song, and so uh, that's how I found out about him, and then searched him up on YouTube for, you know, the album Electric Scene and Coma, so that was pretty awesome. I've always enjoyed those albums. What is your favorite piece of Buckethead merch that you own? The special toy that he gave me at the 2019 show, this is a... Uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, King Ghidorah versus Godzilla. He also gave me at that concert a Hot Wheels set. This was actually a gift to my girlfriend. She uh, lets me hang on to it. Also this dinosaur play set. All in one show I got these things. It was incredible. I, I would have never, I mean just seeing him alone was all I needed. But to, you know, get a gift from him personally it, it blew my mind. I have some signed CDs. Uh, I, it's Claymation Courtyard and uh, Crumple. Uh, this is live in Buckethead Land. I got this at the show. I think it's an amazing album. Uh, this is my canvas card that he made me. Uh, got a signature on the back. I like this one. It definitely lights up the room. You know, it catches your eye. This is the very first painting I've ever got from Buckethead. I think it's different. Yeah, I don't see a lot of green in his paintings, at least from my notice. Uh, and this really stuck out to me with the colors. You got, you know, the Halloween colors, you kind of have that. And then, you know, I've kind of joked around with before, that's probably what he looks like underneath the mask. I'm kidding. Um, of course, you got the signature on the side there. Uh, but yeah, this is my first painting. I love it. You know, it definitely has a personality of its own. This one, right off the bat, makes me think of the Cuckoo Clocks of Hell. I think that album is, it's out there in such a great way. It, it's, I just feel like it can't be done by anybody else. This is my baby. This is, uh, guitar, you know, I put together. I didn't make it, but... A lot of these parts I uh, put together on this. Um, I play this thing every day. Uh, equipped is the orange number one stretch strap. Uh, these things are pretty rare to find. Um, so this is probably the most valuable, I guess, collection I have of Bucketheads. I don't own any personalized Buckethead merch, but I've got a bunch of items. I have the Buckethead style Gibson guitar. It's a knockoff, but it sounds decent and it's fun to mess around with the kill switches. I've got a slew of t-shirts. Ones I've been wearing most recently have been Welcome to Buckethead Land, uh, Extreme Close-Up, this interesting abstract design with the baby chick. On my desk at work, I have like a mini shrine which has a replica small KFC Flying V. It's got an acrylic baby Buckethead block and I've got a Buckethead coffee mug. Um, also on my car, in the back of my car, I have a Buckethead decal. So I've got Buckethead reminders pretty much everywhere, at home, at work, when I'm driving, when I'm out and about. I definitely love this piece uh, because it is a piece of him. Um, knowing that he put his mark on that, it's pretty awesome. Secret recipe DVD, getting this back in 2006 was pretty cool and uh, I love it. This is some artwork uh, that I have about the heads and posters. Uh, but speaking of artwork, one of my favorite pieces that I actually just got and so happy with and is my bucket head tattoo. Still healing, but within another month or so, we should have it all done. It's basically bucket headland with the roller coaster in the background, bucket head for life, 
Um, doesn't get any better than that. My favorite piece of Buckethead merch would have to be my original Herbie prop. Imagine that. My idea of Buckethead merchandise is a little bit different than most people's idea for merch because I'm not really into collecting the pikes and having every single painting he's ever released and owning old rare t-shirts and stuff. This is the kind of stuff that I like. I like props and masks and stage used pieces, stuff like that. So I definitely would have to say that my original vintage decapitated zombie illusions prop from Distortions Unlimited, AKA Herbie, is my favorite piece and that is solely for the fact that Herbie is such a unique weird thing and like I said before he got me into Buckethead originally and I uh, just I will never forget the feeling of realizing that I was getting this guy in the mail. I had a friend of mine that I had been bothering for a long time to sell me Herbie and uh, he finally gave me the chance to own it and I've had him for probably I don't know, six or seven years now, and I just, I love Herbie, so. You love it all, you know what I mean? And it's like, this shirt is my lucky shirt, you know. If I'm going to play the lottery, I'm going to wear this shirt. I don't even wear it, I wear a shirt under this shirt, just because I don't want to get it dirty, you know. And also, I love these letters he gave me. It says, create and imagine, it's just exactly, it's exactly how I think, you know. It's like, we, we can, with our collective consciousness, actually create things. You know, if we all get together, we could, we could save this whole planet, we could save the whole human race. That's, that's kind of what it's all about. And I love this yellow mask, it actually fell pretty much into my hands when I was at a concert, at a Buckethead show. <laughs> I put it on and it just felt like it was, I was at home, you know. Like, I wore it so much, it's like almost got a crack in it and stuff. And, and I love this 513, 1031 album. It's not a music video, it's just something incredible to watch, you know, and if you try to understand it, it's, it makes it even more fun because you don't know if you're right or not, but it's it's fun, you know. And live in Buckethead Land, I just love looking, just looking at the, the art and all the things that are in it. And now, you, now look, you're in the backstage. <laughs> it's, it's like, hey, look, look at me, I'm backstage. It's just fun, like, Buckethead Land is real, but I got this two-minute cassette that he made and when the slunk pass it was like a gift from somebody right I was at a low time at that spot it just turned into a great year I had like met the girl of my dreams oh wait can't, can't forget this piece that's this is my favorite piece of merch that's what it is and I don't and I, I opened it because I just for me I have to enjoy stuff like I can't keep them in packages I just have to to me this is like so beautiful and I I like to put it next to me and my grandfather, who was like a, such an influence on me, him and my grandmother. When I was little, I wouldn't even, probably wouldn't even have a chance without them, with all their positive influence, you know. This painting that I got from a friend, I really don't know really what it means, but I've always loved his paintings that he's done, and uh, seen him online, and I'm like, wow, I really like, like these paintings. This is probably the coolest thing I have just because it's signed, you know. Uh, that's my favorite thing. And then this is the first show I ever went to. Years later I opened up for that one guy and I was able to get his signature on this. Because I think all my shows I saw him with that one guy. One of my bands opened up for Eric Wood and I had no idea that who he was really, you know. And when I saw him I was like, dude you look exactly like this guy from Secret Recipe video, Buckethead, and he's like, oh, Buckethead, I haven't seen him in years. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe. What piece of Buckethead merch would you love to own that you don't already have? A Buckethead signature Gibson, I mean, I'm in love with that guitar, just looking at it makes me happy. A uh, rare and expensive Gibson signature Les Paul Buckethead uh, guitar. There are people out there that have it, and the resale of it is very expensive and they're just beautiful pieces of art. Another thing I would love to have uh, merchandise wise and I don't know why every time I go order one a canvas oil painting of Buckethead it's either out of print or he's not producing pictures at the time. 2020 I have to make a commitment to get a canvas painting by Buckethead. Items that I'd like to own uh, would be an authentic Buckethead signature Gibson, um, some of his effects and pedals, I would like to get a Buckethead tattoo. There is a 
a picture that I got from Jennifer Kilgore, uh, the admin of the BucketBot Facebook page. Um, it's the high voltage symbol from Pike 51, except it has like this red heart um, giving life uh, into the figure, stick figure. Uh, looks really cool, it would make a perfect tattoo. Uh, but most of all, um, if I get to see him again on tour, I want to do the gift exchange. I have a couple of really neat ideas for gifts that I want to give him and hopefully get something from him in return. Uh, I would cherish that shit forever. He was giving out these little um, papers and they were just little messages. I guess this one fan said that he got a, um, like a paper that said, I wish you the best in the new year. May this year bring you very good uh, fortune and the best of luck or something like that. But it was just very, very special, very personal, and I guess he was handing them out. I, I think there's plenty of merch out there that you can get, but something personal like that, that he made himself and he gives you I think that'd be really cool if he started to do that again so that that would be a piece of merch I would like to own for sure his paintings for sure They're, that would just be a really cool thing to have up hanging and see every day that he layered you know that'd be really awesome one piece of merch that I would love to own that I don't already is something stage used. A stage used bucket or specifically a stage used mask by Buckethead would be the holy grail for me. Like I said before, I am definitely the mask guy and uh, I've come to obtain quite a few stage used pieces from some of my favorite acts, but I think that a stage used Buckethead piece would be next level for me, so I'm still holding out for the day that I can make that happen and that would truly be a dream come true. The Buckethead merch that I would like to own would be probably Pike 43 and Pike 13. Those are pretty good pikes. I'd like to own those someday. What would you like to see from Buckethead in 2020? What I'd like to see from Buckethead in 2020, um, we just got the announcement of new pikes. Um, so new tunes in February. Of course, I'd love him to just keep making music and touring for forever. Um, but I don't want to be greedy. He's given us so much. So uh, for 2020, I would just like him to do whatever he wants to do, whatever would make him happy. If it's new music, if it's a tour, if he wants to paint, if he was, just wants to sit on a beach and watch the ocean, whatever makes him happy, I'm good. What I would like to see in 2020 would be a tour, a Buckethead tour. That would be a great thing sometime in the summer or Maybe the fall or something. Obviously another tour. I would love to see Buckethead any chance that I get. So anytime he comes to Ohio, it is a must. But more specifically, something that I really, really want to see is Buckethead on the House of Masks YouTube channel. I think that we would film the coolest shit in the world. I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss. You can probably censor it. I'm sorry, Natternet. Woo! What I would like to see from him would be whatever Whatever he makes him feel good, like that's all I really care about. I want, like, I have a wealth of music already, and every more that he adds on to that is, is just a bonus. But it's also so enjoyable. Like I can't wait for those new albums to come out that he already has on Bobby Headland. You know, and, like I like that that voice that Bootsy has. I would love to hear some of that. I also like the sounds in nature that he puts in, and I love all the little subtle sounds that he puts in while he's playing and um, I, I like robot voices too <laughs> I don't know it's just whatever he does is okay with me definitely more pikes we are spoiled with pikes um, by him uh, we are conditioned as bucket fanatics that we want those pikes to come out on a regular basis they're exciting they're great uh, and I just love them also I'd love to see Buckethead tour again which I'm hoping that he does, and if he does tour, there's a couple of things I'd like to see. I'd like to see him tour with Brain for a couple of shows. I've seen many videos of him and Brain playing together. I'd like to see him live with Brain. They, the chemistry those two have, the friendship, you could just see right through the videos and how tight they are and well-rounded musicians they are. Um, a couple of other shows in 2020 that I don't know if it will ever happen, and I'd like to see. I'd love to see a Deli Creeps reunion. I've never seen a Deli Creeps play live. I, the footage on it, I'm intrigued by their music. I think it's phenomenal. I'd love to see a little reunion. And another thing that probably won't happen, but never say never, uh, I'd like to see Buckethead on a big stage again. Could you imagine one of these summer tour festivals with Guns N' Roses and Buckethead comes out and plays 
two or three songs off Chinese Democracy the way they should be played. Um, and maybe even do a little solo for solo action between him and, and Slash. And uh, that would be phenomenal. Like, see both of my heroes up there, but Buckethead showing his boss. <laughs> yeah. I hope he tours. I've seen a lot of bands, but when I see Buckethead in 2019, it was by far the best show I've ever been to in my life. I doubt this would happen, but I would like to see Gibson release a new Buckethead model. So that way the newer fan base like me um, that wasn't around in 2011 can have a chance of getting their hands on one. I would really like to see Bucket bring back Giant Robot Band with DJ Disc and Brain obviously and Dan Monty or whoever. That was my favorite era that I never got to see. Definitely one of the coolest, you know, Giant Robot. I mean, how can you beat it? <laughs> And even his outfit during that era is the coolest, I think, with the orange strap and double buckets, the paint bucket underneath and everything. But yeah, that's probably, I mean, that's what I want to see him do. If Buckethead is watching, what would you like to say to him? Thank you so much for being not only the greatest guitarist ever, uh, probably one of the best human beings from we know about you. Uh, thank you so much for your your intelligent music making and, and just passion for the guitar. Uh, thank you for letting us be passengers on this journey through Buckethead land. Uh, your music is the soundtrack to my life with good times and bad times. Uh, just in recent months going through a rough time with a significant loss of my family, uh, with my mom, losing my mom, and, and your music has, has held me in check and, and got me through that mourning process. Um, especially with Pike 65, Hold Me Forever. It's, I can't tell you what that, that soundtrack does and, and allows me to um, make things a little bit more tolerable. Thank you so much, Buckethead. Uh, one thing that I would like to say to him is obviously thank you for everything. I know that that's super, super cliche and that probably everybody's first answer is going to be thank you, but I think it's because we need it. And I think that it is definitely appropriate. Um, a, a huge thank you to Buckethead for everything. He is a massive inspiration to me and thousands of others in more ways than one and uh, I definitely think that a thank you is in order so from the bottom of my cold black heart thank you Buckethead for everything and another thing I would like to say is how can we work out a way to get some stage use stuff in my collection I'm just kidding that is uh, just a joke unless you're watching this and want to give me some stage use stuff I'd definitely be all about that I just want to say thank you for everything you've given me um, and really, you've given me more than I could ever have asked for from an artist. I mean, people listen to music to escape and people listen to music to get out of their problems or just simply to have a good mindset. But you are a lifestyle, man. You are what you have given to the world. You, I don't even think you realize. I mean, you are such a creative soul. You are such a compassionate man. Um, and the, it'd be a really sad day to see you go. And I really appreciate the interview you did, the Coming Alive podcast. It really gave the fans a chance to get to know you, get a chance to love you, you know, learning all those different things just from hearing you talk. Thank you for everything, not just the music, just for being an overall role model, a person that I would love to be one day, as far as how you present yourself and how you um, are as a person. I think it's a very inspirational thing. Very inspirational. Thank you. You know, we love you. Thank you for everything. Like, it's just, everything just kind of went in a positive direction since I discovered the music. And I, I didn't even know music was that important to me. You know, it's like, um, I feel like the earth itself has energy and it's, and Buckethead is part of that energy and it, and it like helps me, you know, like, even today something happened or a thought I did happened and then I looked out the window and all the leaves that used to be frozen to the ground started lifting up in the wind like little hands waving it was that's just I guess that's how I think but that's how I am also and I guess that's that thank you Buckethead if Buckethead were watching I'd first like to say thank you for the enormous amount of amazing music you've given us over the last 30 years I'd also like to thank you for going out of your comfort zone and doing the Coming Alive podcast in 2017. It was nice to get some insight into you as a person, uh, to hear your journey, the pain of losing your parents, um, the scariness of dealing with health issues, 
how you manage your social anxiety. Um, I could really relate to it. I know a lot of others could too. Uh, it also confirmed a lot of the wonderful things uh, that we already knew about you, that you're just a kind, gentle soul. Uh, for me, uh, you've redefined the image of what it means to be a rock star. Um, and I didn't get to see you uh, until this last 2019 tour for the first time. I had seen other big name acts and guitarists before, um, but watching you and your guitar for two hours didn't feel like I was watching a guitar player. It felt like I was watching a guitar god. It was transformative. The very next day, I went and dug my guitar out of the basement and um, started playing for the first time uh, in 10 years. And I've been playing regularly every day since, and that was about six months ago. Your fans adore and love you so much. Uh, we know that you love and adore us as well. The bond and the connection you have with your fans is unlike anything I've ever seen with any musician ever. That's a powerful thing. Steve Martin used to work at Disneyland. And he, what I, from what I heard is that he played banjo and you know, he used to do the arrow through the head thing. And I think that Buckethead, when he was a kid, probably went to Disneyland and saw Steve Martin doing that with the arrow through his head, playing Hog Bitch Stomp while Foggy R River Mountain Breakdown. And I, I just, I don't know, I would ask him if that was one of his biggest, maybe that was a huge influence for just the whole, even Bucket on the head, being silly, funny, and like super good, but like funny at the same time. I don't know. I, I have an irking feeling that that's where that came from. Just want to say, I love your music. I've always loved it. Been a fan for maybe 15 years at the most. Been a fan. Um, yeah, your music means a lot to a lot of people, and um, can't wait for your new pikes to come out next month. So, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Natanet. Uh, he is just the official, unofficial Buckethead fan site because his work and the amount of effort that goes into these videos, the research that he has to put into, it's amazing. Uh, I thought I was a crazy Buckethead fan, Buckethead, Buckethead fan. Um, Natanet takes it to a whole nother level with passion and just intensity. It's incredible. I've learned so much from his videos things that I never knew about in such a short period of time. And I love the way Nanonet brings the whole Buckethead community together. Um, I became a fan of uh, House of Mask with AJ uh, on there. He does incredible work on there. Speaking of my bust that I put together back in 2009, who would have thought that someone would have that same passion to take it to another level like AJ has. Um, also the Buckethead Disciple is another great uh, channel on there that I would have not known about until I saw Nanonet's channel. So. Thank you, Natanet, for all the work you do and continue to help the channel grow and, and get more Buckethead fans out there and spread the word. Because Buckethead deserves that notoriety and definitely your fan of, of him and your page uh, channel definitely allows that to happen. That platform is incredible. Once again, thank you so much but, uh, to let me be on this video and I appreciate it. Thank you, Natanet. Just want to say thank you, Natanet, for letting me be in your video. Uh, Love your videos and um, yeah, I can't wait to see what the future looks like for your videos and everything. Um, hope Buckethead does another tour. I'd like to thank Natternet for reaching out and allowing me to do this. It really is an honor. I love her YouTube channel. Uh, it really does solidify the Buckethead fan base. Um, and I just recently found out you do your own animations. So holy shit, that is a lot of work and time that you put into that channel. Uh, but it totally shows. The Christmas special you did was just hilarious, and it makes me happy every time I see a new upload. Uh, so thank you for all you do, and maybe one day you'll get the interview that we're all waiting for. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, I love your channel. Uh, I think you do a great job of capturing people's thoughts and wonders they might or might not have of Buckethead that uh, and, and pretty much put them to life. Um, for example, in your recent video, uh, it's always been something I've wondered, like when he recorded the album right after he had his heart operation, I've always wondered what that was, but I never really gave it thought. And when you put that video out, it was like, that, that was so interesting to me. So I think your channel does a very, very good job of doing things like that. Um, I know I've watched every video. <laughs> 
So I just want to thank you again for giving me this amazing opportunity for being part of your video. Buckethead is one of, if not the only one of my musical influences out of every single musical influence that I've ever had in my life that has not let me down. And I think that that is a huge deal because a lot of times bands will come out or I'll end up being a fan of these bands or music artists and I always end up disappointed in one way or another. They always let me down with their personalities or their attitudes or the products that they're producing or promoting and Buckethead has yet to do any of that so I think that that is a very big deal and I want everyone out there to be well aware of the fact that Buckethead is art and progression and human all in one. I think that he is the epitome of a great person so we definitely need to be thankful for Buckethead. I think I used to be a mailman, so I delivered mail at a fast pace to about 600 different houses. And like all these, like a hornet would fly in the window and start buzzing its wings on the window to, to warn it, you know. Or like I remember, I think it was Worms for the Garden was on, and I'm outside delivering a package, and this little duck starts w walking up the street, whack, 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 and he's eating worms off the side of the road because it was raining. It was just amazing. So. Definitely want to share my experience at the 2019 show. I bought you a Texas Chainsaw collector's item on the. It's like an actor's figure or action figure. I remember when I gave that to you, you were ecstatic to have that. Yeah, I mean, I think you loved it. <laughs> um, I remember I shook your hand, and you doing that made my world. I think about that at least once a day. Um, and like I said earlier, you've given that special toy out to me that that really That really was one of the greatest moments of my life. You just need to know that your fans We love you. It was such a great night. Thank you for doing that Thank you for everything you've given me once again. Thank you Natternet for allowing me to talk about my experience and you know just Give a small thanks if this can somehow reach him. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? AJ Good here at the house of... What? What is it? This isn't a video for my channel. This is for Natternet. Oh, okay. Well, in that case... Boop, 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 beep, 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 beep. Uh... Woo! Broken head! <laughs> And this is just some generic shirt that my ex-girlfriend got for me. It's cool though. I don't know. If you ever have a moment, check out my YouTube channel. I do Buckethead covers weekly. It would mean everything to me if you checked it out. <laughs>